Welcome to the channel. My name is Matias. Today, we're going to talk about Jason Aaron's time on the Avengers. We're going to cover Avengers issues 14 to 17, where we have this vampire civil war that the Avengers are sort of caught in the middle. Now, I've mentioned previously that I don't like story arcs where we have vampires. They're not really my thing, but here I feel like Jason Aaron is able to pull it off. We have this new vampire villain hit the scene. His name is Colonel Shadow. He's this leader of this new vampire faction that has gone to war against Dracula. The thing is, when this story starts off, they're killing vampires left and right, causing chaos on a global scale. This whole confrontation has produced an insane amount of collateral damage. Where we have the Avengers trying to do as much damage control as possible. So what happens after the first wave of attacks, Colonel Shadow actually gives himself up to the Avengers, puts himself into their custody. The Avengers really don't understand what Colonel Shadow is going for here, but they take him back to their base. There, Colonel Shadow is interrogated by Blade, who was on the Avengers during this time. So what happens is, Colonel Shadow had this hellhound always with him. His name is Sarge. Not sure why he's not in a cell, or if he broke out, it's not on panel. This hellhound seeks out Ghost Rider, and actually converts Ghost Rider into this mindless slave, and basically, this mind control Ghost Rider is going to be his ultimate weapon to take down the rest of the vampires that they're trying to call. So the basic idea is that Colonel Shadow was able to trick the Avengers. This whole thing was a trap. Now with Ghost Rider under his magical control, he's going to be his secret weapon to take down all the vampires that oppose him. So here's where the story gets really interesting, at least for me. Now, at the beginning, Dracula's castle was destroyed. Everyone who was loyal to him has been dispersed all around the world. And Dracula, out of fear, he gives himself up to the Russian authorities, to the Red Guard. So what happens is we have Dracula actually negotiating with the Russians, giving them all kinds of secret information. But we don't really know what he's asking in change. We actually get this very impactful moment where we have Red Widow. She's interrogating Dracula. She's executing vampires one by one every time she doesn't believe what Dracula is telling her. And we see Dracula really suffering over this whole situation that he can't protect his people. So obviously what happens is Colonel Shadow gets wind that Dracula is under Russian custody. They go to the prison where he's at. Obviously the Avengers are not far behind, but when they do arrive, they see that Colonel Shadow's forces have basically steamrolled over the Red Guard. So now we get the rematch between Colonel Shadow's forces and the Avengers. And we get this really awesome one-on-one -on -one battle between Blade and Shadow. And I forgot to mention, in this story, Colonel Shadow has a little baby version of Man-Thing on his shoulder that he has learned to weaponize. This Man-Thing is actually called Boy-Thing. And what happens during this battle with Blade, Boy-Thing is rescued. He actually starts clinging himself to Blade. So from this point on in the series, Blade's going to have like an amplified power set thanks to Boy Thing. So the Avengers are able to stop Colonel Shadow and his forces, but they discover that Dracula is MIA. He has disappeared. And what we discover is that the Russian government has given the thumbs up to Dracula and all the vampires of the world to move and set up shop in Chernobyl. We are going to have the birth of this new vampire nation. Dracula actually establishes in the story that Romania wasn't the cool place to be anymore. That even though humans are their food source, they have become too much of a pest. So moving to Chernobyl with all this radiation, normal humans are not going to bother them anymore. We discover that Dracula actually set up this whole situation in the first place. That he was the one responsible to manipulate Colonel Shadow in the first place into this uprising. We also discover that Colonel Shadow is his son, Zerus. So the story has a lot of really nice details that, at least for me, sold me on a vampire story. Because again, I don't like vampire stories in general. So I'm leaving this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.